This guide is designed to help free-to-play players or newer players to Rise of Kingdoms figure out which pieces of equipment they should craft first and hold on to for a very long time. Because it turns out that in some cases, a very small commitment of materials, like this Gatekeeper's Shield, can last you until the end game in Rise of Kingdoms. So stick around in this video for a guide that will help teach you how to evaluate equipment and will give you specific examples for the very best free-to-play or low-spender equipment that you hold on to for a very long time. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskel Gaming, and this guide is going to give you the top free-to-play and new player equipment, things that you should hold on to for a while, and that give you so much value per material that you spend. Again, like this Gatekeeper Shield, which, spoiler alert, might be the single best item in the game for the amount of uh, materials that you're putting into it and the impact it will give you. Now, why is that and how does that work? Here's how I'm going to divide up this video. First, I'm going to talk about the guiding principles for how you figure out which piece of equipment you want to go craft. Then, I'm going to talk about the honorable mentions for equipment that is just so good that you will upgrade from it, but you will use it for a very long time. And then lastly, I'm going to give you the top seven pieces of equipment that you will just hold on to and may never upgrade from for the rest of your time playing Rise of Kingdoms, depending on how long you play and what new things they ultimately release into the game. Again, kind of like this Gatekeeper Shield, where there is very little reason to upgrade, but there is some reason, and we'll get to that. So first, let's start with our guiding principles around how you figure out which things to make. And if you're brand new to the game, hey, if you have no equipment in a certain slot for a commander, you should probably put something there. But once you start to move a little bit past that point where you're going from no equipment to something, how do you pick what to work on? There's a couple principles here. First of all, I want to point out the priority of stats. In general, something that gives health is going to be higher priority than something that gives defense, which is going to be higher priority still than something that gives attack. Attack is the lowest priority. This in part has to do with the way stats work in Rise of Kingdoms. There is diminishing returns on stats the more you get of them. I have proved that in a number of videos. And because your alliance technology will give you attack and defense, and because eventually you'll get to KVK technology that gives a bunch of attack, you will see that this is the reason why health will be so valuable, because it will generally be the lowest. Now, that is not true everywhere. It depends on what commanders you're using, but it's a very, very easy rule of thumb. Things that give health are the priority. Now, the next thing you may be wondering is, so how do I compare health to attack? When do I pick one over another? And I will generally advise that you go for more stats with some exceptions. And we'll talk about those in a little bit. Sometimes health is just so good that when you're looking at something like this gatekeeper shield, which when you get the special talent, and I'll talk about that a little more in a second, is going to give you 10.5% of health. For the amount of materials you commit to this project, you're just going to use this into the end game potentially because... To get an upgrade at all, you've got to commit a massive amount of epic materials. It's so many more materials that almost certainly you will just focus on other things instead of the small upgrade you get from this. So there's really sort of a couple factors you look at here. One is, am I getting a stat that's favorable, like health? And how much of that stat am I getting anyways? How much more stat points am I getting? And I want to call out the fact that a stat swap from one uh, stat type to another is very, very favorable. So as an example, you will be looking to make upgrades uh, from things that give attack to things that give defense or health. So to just look at something that's at the epic tier, this witch's lineage is giving attack. Well, I would much rather have this defense and I'm getting more stats anyways. So this is a case where you're getting kind of a big win when you make an upgrade both switching to a favorable stat and getting more stat points. Now, it costs you a lot of materials. This is a legendary item. Downside of a legendary item is that you really can't dismantle it. You lose half your materials. So you really almost never want to be dismantling legendaries, especially if you're free to play. Don't make things that you're ultimately going to want to dismantle later. Now, I sort of assumed that in this guide, you're going to be crafting things till you get the special talent. 
Uh, special talent basically gives you a little bit of extra stats based on the troop type that you select. Um, that is infantry, archers, cavalry, or leadership. You could pick leadership, but um, I guess you might do that for Ethelflaed in the early game. But for the most part, it's going to be infantry, archers, or cavalry. You can see here, this is giving me some extra stats. It's about 30% of stats boosted. Um, if you wear that item on the same commander for which you have the talent. So I'm assuming for these greens and blues that I'm about to recommend to you that you're going to basically refine them until you get the special talent. Refining is the process by which you use extra patterns and in the case of legendary items, also more materials, to try to get a special talent, those extra points. Now, if you needed more blue and green patterns, I just want to point out that if you go into the VIP shop, you can get more of those in here as I go and make my regular VIP shop purchases. Um, you can get green patterns over here for resources, which is generally a good deal if you need those patterns, and then also blue ones as well. Epic patterns, probably your best source of that besides free-to-play events, is going to be the egg event, also known as the Holy Knight's Treasure. Um, and also, if you wanted a specific epic pattern, rather than... Spending your gems in here in the VIP shop, which feels pretty expensive to me, probably the best way to go and do that is to earn a bunch of hammers free to play in an event called the Hunt for History. I have a ton of examples on of, of both of those events on my channel. If you want to check those out after the video, I'll have a card up in the top so you can go and get a look. So now that we've covered all these baseline principles, let's talk about the honorable mentions. These are items you are going to upgrade from. So they're not like the best free-to-play equipment in the game because you will upgrade. You, you do need to upgrade. Um, and I'll get at the end to the things that you probably won't ever upgrade from, okay? So let's start and we'll break it down by unit type. We're going to start with cavalry. For cavalry, um, there's a number of pieces I want to talk about starting with the Vanguard Halberd. This thing is so good. It's giving you 9% of stats. Those stats are... Health and defense. Getting the talents is just going to give you, obviously, more stats here. And it even has a set bonus. This, by the way, will bring us to another piece from Cavalry that is just so good. Like, if you're free to play, you're starting with these two pieces, the Vanguard Halberd, and then also these pants, which are a part of the set, the Vanguard Greaves. They give 4% attack and 1% health. The set bonus is another 2% attack. The problem with those two slots is that there's not a good upgrade path. So if we look at the blue items available, there's no good way to get cav stats. So you will use Vanguard Greaves for a very long time. For the amount of materials, the stats you're getting is gangbuster, man. It's such a deal. Same is true with the Vanguard Halberd. You got a ton of stats here. More stats and better stat types than this Blazing Axe, which is your only option right now in blue. So you are going to stick with these for a very long time. They are great value. You will upgrade from them. But my God, if you're starting out and you want some cav gear, start there, baby. It's so, so good. Now, there is one other item I do want to talk about, which you will upgrade from, but it might be a low priority or take a very long time for you to decide to finally upgrade from it, and that is the Expedition War Helmet. With special talent, this will run you 8% cavalry defense. That's really good. When we talk about stats on a commander and stats swapping your upgrade path from the expedition war helmet is going to be the abyssal visage which gives attack stat so just making an abyssal visage is actually not a good trade for you you're going from eight percent defense to eight percent attack you really have to get the talent on the abyssal visage before it becomes something that you really want to be using which is why most free to play or low spend probably just don't even make this upgrade for a very long time. As I said, this is some of the best free-to-play equipment. You're going to stick with the Expedition Warhelm for a very long time. And later, once you've done all of your other higher priority upgrades, then you go for this Abyssal Visage, hopefully at the point where you can instantly get a special talent because you have saved up enough patterns to go and do that. Otherwise, Expedition Warhelm, stick with it for a while. Now, Infantry also has a couple really great pieces uh, the pieces that you will use for a very long time include Calvin's Hand. This thing is amazing. It's got 5% base stats for infantry. And while I appreciate that the Windswept set gives you infantry health and some march speed, and march speed is valuable, if you're in the market for more stats, Calvin's Hand is great. 
You will eventually upgrade to a Seth's Brutality. Seth's Brutality is very good. But until you get a talented Seth's Brutality, you're really not getting that many more stat points on that thing compared to your talented Calvin's Hand. So stick with the Calvin's Hand for quite some time. Focus on other pieces of gear. The other piece of gear that is just really shockingly good for infantry is right over here, the Scarlet Hounds. Get a talent on this, and I think you're looking at 5.5% health. I mean, if you just go on your upgrade path, as I've been describing, and say, well, I'm gonna, I want to make an epic, until you talent this, the Frost Treads are actually a downgrade because you would rather have the health. So this is one of the last infantry upgrades you would try to make because the Scarlet Hounds are so good. Now, I already talked about the Gatekeeper's Shield, and this actually, I think, is going to be the number one item on my list overall for items that you, like, you just never upgrade from. So this also is just a great pickup, and you will never upgrade from this. I'm going to talk about the Gatekeeper's Shield more later on, and I'm saying never, but you will at some point. It's just a very low priority. Lastly, I want to talk about Archers. And for archers, there are a couple really good blue uh, pieces of gear as well. You know that I love health as a stat, and the commander's heavy armor is giving you 8% of health when talented. That's amazing. It's health, it's blue, so it's a very low material cost to make it. So good. This is a piece you will not upgrade from for a while, but you will upgrade, and I'll talk about what you upgrade to in a minute, because what you upgrade to is very good too. Um, in addition, the green Helm of the Phoenix is actually shockingly good. It's green. When you get the talent, you're looking at like 5.5% total defense. And what's your upgrade from that? There's no blue item, so you got to go straight to epic. And sure, this epic is great. It's 7.5% defense. You're going to upgrade to that, and it's more stats based, by the way. But this is an epic. This is so many more materials than this Helm of the Phoenix, which, by the way, also does damage to barbarians, which is nice, you know, if you're battling barbs. But... I think that that upgrade is something you will do, but starting with a nice Helm of the Phoenix, get the talent on that sucker, that, that's just a great piece of gear. Uh, a couple miscellaneous things, by the way, that, that I will be remiss not to mention, includes the Wind Swept set, by the way. If I scroll down here, this is giving you March Speed and Health for Infantry and Cavalry. And March Speed's very good. I generally err on the side at times for having stats rather than march speed, but honestly, you could kind of go either way, and if what you care about is Ark of Osiris and not getting caught out in the field because you're marching slower, then you may just find overall you prefer to have the march speed, and each of the items here is honestly great, with the exception of the windswept helmet where you have just, I feel like, a lot of better options generally. Um, I would craft these items for sure, and they're great to use, Especially for city defense, which sounds weird, except the two-piece bonus gives attack to all troop types, and you're going to have all troop types in your city. So that's actually a deceptively good piece of gear. And just regarding that helmet, which unfortunately has attack stat, I think for calves, you would rather use an expedition war helmet. But for infantry, yeah, it's actually a pretty solid choice to make the windswept war helmet because you just don't have a better option in that slot. So those are all really amazing pieces, and one accessory option I'll give you that you can only get from Lost Canyon in KVK is the Call of the Loyal. It deserves an honorable mention because I think as a free-to-play player or a low spender, it's going to be a while before you have all your accessory slots filled out, and just dropping in a Call of the Loyal and getting the March Speed is great. It is, however, a non-trivial material cost, but I know endgame players that still don't have all their accessory slots sorted out, so... I feel like just getting some accessories in place, even if it's just some march speed, can be very, very valuable. Now, this brings us to the top seven, the very best um, free-to-play equipment in the game. And I'm not going to include any legendary equipment. This is a separate matter. I will get there. I will probably make a dedicated video to that as well. I want to talk about the most high-value epics, high leverage, where you make these and then just think about other things. Because you're good, baby. Let's start with that. And number seven on the list is going to be the Frost Treads. Now, I told you this would be an upgrade path. You will eventually upgrade to this, and you will talent this. And you get like 7.5% defense. But I'm going to point out, 
that at 7.5% defense, that is the same amount of defense that you get from the infantry set boots, 7.5%. Now, eventually, you might get a set bonus, and then you're talking about more stats, but that is a lot of legendary materials just to go for a 3% set bonus. That is something you do down the road. Okay, the only thing that messes with that calculus a little bit is iconic equipment, which gives you extra stats on top of some legendary items, but there are way more high leverage legendaries that you should be making, not those boots. So frost treads is something you're going to stick with for a very long time. You do have an upgrade path from this, but if you're free to play, man, you're thinking about upgrading other pieces before you upgrade from these boots. Even though, by the way, you can get Shio's Return from Lost Canyon, and that is easy to obtain there. Still, the, the half a percent defense for 20 legendary materials, that's a steep price, in my opinion. There will be way more valuable other things to craft. Number six in the list is a Cavalry Glove. This is an item that you make it, and you don't have to upgrade, ever, if you don't want to. Um, and Iset Sufferance is really good. Talent this thing, and you're looking at 4% health, 4% attack. Wow. I mean, your next best option, in fact, the best in slot option, is the Navar's Control. That's 8% health. So the only gain you get going from an Isset Sufferance to a Navar's Control is a stat swap from attack to health. That's And it's only 4% of stat swap. So I would stick with Isset Sufferance for a very, very long time. You have much higher priority Cav gear upgrades other than Navar's Control. The Navar's Control is very good. And if you were to get lucky on any of those legendaries and get the talent, good for you. But it took me 16 new legendary crafts before I got my very first special talent. So don't bank on that. You'll be more lucky than I did, maybe. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the next thing you need to make, number five, best free-to-play equipment is going to be a health item, obviously. And that is going to be the Gladiator Legs. This gives Cav health, talent this sucker, and you're looking at 10.5% health. And yes, there is a legendary upgrade path. This is just straight better Ash of the Dawn. 1.5% extra health on Ash of the Dawn. But is that worth 60 legendary materials to get that upgrade? I don't think so. I mean, okay, let me be clear. At some point for you, it will be. But compared to your other options, probably not, right? So Gladiator is a great piece to use for an extremely long time. This is a low priority to upgrade from because it's giving you health. And that health is really great. And you can get more on the legendary, but do that as one of the last upgrades you make to your cavalry set. Number four on the list for some of the best free-to-play and uh, low-spend gear in the game is going to be Karak's Humility. This also gives health, and it gives 10.5% health. And the reason I rank this higher than Gladiator is that your upgrade path is not as good for this as it was for the Gladiator. Because yes, there is an upgrade path. You can get more health right over here. But for infantry, you don't have that option. You're going from health, and if you want to upgrade, if you go to the set, you're switching to attack, which is actually maybe even a downgrade in some cases. So you probably don't want to go to Greaves of the Eternal Empire. You would be interested in Eternal Knight. You can get that from Lost Canyon every KVK. But that's now defense, and defense is not as good as health in almost all cases, which means that sure, you're getting more stats, but until you get the talent on this, is it even technically an upgrade? So number four on the list, Karox Humility. Make it, talent it, hold on to it for a very long time, upgrade other things first before you look to upgrade from this. Now number three on the list is boots. And now we're getting to some archer gear, and that is the flame treads. And these flame treads, oh, talent this sucker, 7.5% health, that's a great place to be. You don't have to upgrade for this for a very long time because your upgrade path is either going to be the Mountain Crushers. Don't make these. It's attack. Don't do it. You should always be making the set items with the Archer stuff anyways. And the Archer set boots, that's giving defense. Well, that's not as good as health. So just making the upgrade is technically a downgrade <laughs> going from the epic to legendary item unless you are going to put an Iconic on it, unless you are getting a set bonus, right? So it's a low priority upgrade compared to other things. Make flame treads, use them for a very long time, and I'll show you money where my mouth is. I have two archer sets using flame treads, and I got a lot of legendaries, and I still haven't upgraded my second pair of flame treads. I have one archer set legendary, and I have 
two epic archer sets. This is one of the last things you upgrade from. And while we're talking about archers, number two on the list, for whatever reason, archers at the epic tier get a set. Now, I don't know why that is, but this epic set is very good. The revival set, this whole set <laughs> counts as number two on my list because you're going to make these four items and you're not going to upgrade from them for a very long time. It is a low priority upgrade. The helmet is amazing. Defense is a good stat. Uh, the chest piece, attack is less premium. It's fine. Um, the gloves are the weakest item in this set by far. They're great for a leadership commander, for whatever that's worth, if you're using Honda Tarakatsu with archers. But uh, most people are not in this position and aren't using the multiple troop types. Great item for city defense, but you really shouldn't be thinking about that. Probably just use a peace shield. So this is an item that's less amazing, but because it's part of a set, it's still so good. And then the legs are just great. 7.5% uh, defense are really good. Uh, and if you get the four-piece bonus, you're looking at another 3% attack and 3% troop defense. I think realistically in this set, the gloves are something you are going to want to upgrade out of sooner than the other pieces in the set, certainly. And the chess piece, you'd really like to swap out of that at some point for uh, Archer Health which is, by the way, in the Legendary set, right? So I will point out the best items in the Revival set are the Helmet and also the Legs for Longevity. If you're making just two pieces, that may be your starting point, depending on what other Archer gear you have. And this Revival set, you will hold on to it for a very long time. Allow me to show you the sort of money where my mouth is moment here, where like I've got two sets just like that, right? I've got all these epics, the Revival set, and the Flame Treads, as I was showing you. And, you know, hey, the Golden Age is amazing. But the reason that didn't make the cut, by the way, as an item that's, like, on this list that's really good to uh, hang on to and not upgrade from is because you actually have a blue item that's really quite good, right? You use this blue for a while. The Epic is better. It's an upgrade. Um, but I didn't put straight upgrades like that on the list because, I mean, you also can keep upgrading, <laughs> To the legendary, which also gives defense. A lot of lot of clean upgrades with more stats here. That's just really good. No stat swap involved in that at all. And you know, one thing I realize only now I should have put on the list. So bonus item before we talk about the number one item on the list is actually going to be the heart of the saint. This is the bonus item on the list because heart of the saint you can make this. And if you want to upgrade, you are going to a legendary that's giving you attack stat which is widely viewed as just not as good. So um, this is the sort of upgrade you only make when you can talent the Legendary, ideally, or you're getting a set bonus, which means for most people, you're going to make this Heart of the Saint. You're going to stick with it for a long time because the upgrade path for you there is not amazing. You will prioritize other things before you do Heart of the Saint, which brings us, by the way, to the number one item on the list, which I have already talked about at the start of the video, but is deserving of a bit more in-depth explanation. And that is the Gatekeeper's Shield. Now you may be thinking, for a blue, how is this the number one free-to-play item in the game? And the reason is that the upgrade path from Gatekeeper's Shield is so bad and so expensive from a material standpoint that you should just deploy those materials somewhere else and get more benefit. So to explain that a little more clearly, I think it's like four and a half total uh, legendary materials if you were to sort of round up from the blues all the way up to legendaries it's like the equivalent of four and a half legendary materials to make a gatekeeper shield you get ten and a half percent health amazing if you were to talent the sakura fabuki you would get 17 percent attack now people will even make the argument that the sakura fabuki is not even as good as the gatekeeper shield that you would rather just have the health I don't know if I necessarily agree with that in all cases, but what I will say is that the amount of materials you commit here, I mean, we're looking at 25 legendary materials, okay, to make a Sakura Fabuki. That's 100 epics. That is a very, very steep price for the very incremental nature of this upgrade from Gatekeeper Shield to Sakura Fabuki, if you even think it's an upgrade, which a lot of people don't. So, I think that for most players, when you make this Gatekeeper Shield for an Infantry Commander, just use it for a really long time and deploy your materials somewhere else where you get a much bigger gain like all those other pieces that we were talking about. I mean, for 25 
legendary materials, you can make a lot of stuff. You should go make those other things. I think you can make like potentially multiple epics or certainly an epic and a couple of blues. Don't focus on getting one piece like the Sakura Fubuki, like really far along and talented. When you have all these other options that are less materials, preferable stats, and maybe even in other cases, the upgrade just gives you more stats too. That is where you should be focusing if you're free to play or low spend in Rise of Kingdoms or even just new to the game. The only thing I want to add at the very tail end of this video is that, yes, there is ultimately reason to upgrade from these items I shared with you today. And that is largely because at some point, once you start making legendary sets, if you play the game long enough to be doing that, then you're going to be getting really important set bonuses. Again, these start to be very incremental upgrades in nature for the cost especially. And with the addition of the new iconic system to the game, you can give extra base stats to an item, but it must be legendary in order to put an iconic upgrade onto it. So at some point, you do want to make legendaries. I'm not saying don't make legendaries. What I'm saying is make these other things first because the amount of gain you get is really amazing. And when you are factoring in, should I make a legendary or not? Keep in mind that if you are sitting on some number of iconic crystals, not only do you now gain the benefit of all the extra stats that the legendary is giving you, but you are also gaining the benefit of the iconic boost, which is really worth. And on top of that, you do uh, get to roll the dice on getting a special talent. Maybe you'll get lucky. Again, 16 crafts is what it took me to get my first special talent legendary. Here it is. And you remember that, man. You don't forget. When you, when you one-shot a special talent legendary, especially because it was the KVK helmet for me, you do not forget how magical that is. But for most people, man, that, I mean, 16 tries, okay? Focus on epics. Focus on blues. That's my guidance. If you enjoyed this video, do me a huge favor. Throw a like on here and consider subscribing. It supports the channel really a, a, a lot more than you might realize. Uh, and if you have any other questions about equipment or accessories, I'm going to have another video. Card will be up in the top. Go check it out. That talks about the best accessories in Rise of Kingdoms because the reality is that once you get some of your main equipment sorted out, these accessories are absolutely next level game changing. I mean, it's not a coincidence here. My preset for Artemisia when I was using her as primary is the full epic set with legendary accessories. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.